Chat Tuesday with Lorna. Um, so I'm in the nursery, as you can see. I'll just show you around really quickly. We've got our boys' side over here. And then we've got the lounge there with a couple of babies there. And then we've got our girls' side of the nursery over here. It's a little bit sunny, so I've had to put that blind down. Um, so today I basically wanted to give you guys a crash course in reborn collecting. So this video is pretty much for people that are just starting out with reborns that don't know too much about them. Perhaps you've stumbled across them on YouTube or Facebook and you're curious to know a little bit more about them. Um, so um, yeah, that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So as I'm talking, I'm going to move around the room and um, I'll just give you a quick rundown of some of the topics that I will be discussing. So um, while I'm doing that, I'll just zoom in on one of the babies so we can have a look. Firstly, I'll talk a little bit about the history of Reborns, so where they originated from um, and when they started being made and why. And then secondly, I'll talk a little bit about um, how today's Reborns are made because it's a little bit different to how they were made, you know, when they first started coming out. And then I'll also talk about the different types of Reborns. So, um, yeah, I'll give you a rundown of the, of the different types of Reborns that you can purchase. And then also I will go into a little bit about um, buying your first reborn. So what you need to know about buying a reborn, where to look, what to look for and what questions to ask the seller. Um, so we'll get started. So firstly we'll start off with a little bit of the history of reborns. So the first reborns came out um, in around the 1980s. And basically it was just people wanting to create a more lifelike doll. Um, I know as a child it was always my aim was to have dolls in my collection. I had porcelain dolls, but it was always my aim to have dolls that looked as realistic as possible, um, preferably as most like babies as possible. I love the baby dolls. Um, so I guess a lot of people had the same idea. And so um, the first Reborns were made from already existing dolls, usually just a plastic or vinyl doll, your basic um, soft plastic baby doll. Um, Behringer dolls are a good example. They were often used and they still are. Um, and basically the artist would strip back the paint from the doll and they would repaint the doll to make it look more realistic. They would often add hair. This little guy doesn't have hair. But often they would add hair to the doll and, um, and then they would re-weight the baby. So they would weight the doll to make it feel um, heavier to feel more like a, a real baby um, so that's where that whole process was called reborning so basically the doll was reborn so that's where the term reborn comes from um, so we'll move over here now um, to we've got our little Ethan here while we talk a little bit about how reborns are made today because things are a little bit different today so today's reborns rather than being made from a doll that's already available Today's Reborns are made from a blank kit or an unpainted kit. So that comprises of the head and the arms and the, and the legs. And then um, usually the cloth body will be included. Sometimes you have to buy that separately. Um, and then the doll is painted, the head and the limbs are painted. And then the doll is assembled and then you have a Reborn. So yeah, it's a little bit different to how the original uh, Reborns were made. And I know that some people don't like the fact that today's Reborns are still called Reborns just because, you know, they haven't been reborn as such because they've started off as a brand new, they're a brand new doll. They're not, you know, um, coming from a doll that has already existed. Um, but yeah, it doesn't bother me. But um, yeah, that's just what I've heard um, some people say just out of interest. So now I'm going to move over to the floor and I'm going to show you a kit that I have um, so that you can see um, exactly how a reborn starts off. Okay, here we go. So I probably shouldn't have said I'm going to show you exactly how it starts off because this isn't exactly how a reborn starts off because this doll has already been assembled and painted. Um, this was a reborn that I purchased. It was one of the very first reborns that I purchased. It was under $100 which is very inexpensive as far as Reborns go. Um, but, you know, I found out why she was so ex inexpensive when she arrived um, because, yeah, the quality just is, yeah, lacking. <laughs> um, 
But anyway, so this doll, I let Aaliyah have this doll in her room. And while she was in Aaliyah's room, her head came off. So anyway, um, I, I would... I was actually hoping to try and repaint this doll myself at some stage to strip back the paint and and to do that myself. I don't think she's been sealed very well, if at all, anyway. So I think, yeah, hopefully I'll be able to get, get the paint off. Um, so, but just to show you, so when a reborn starts off, you will it will come with the head. Of course, the eyes will not be there and the head will not be painted. So it will just be um, blank. It usually comes in a um, like a, a creamy sort of color from what I've seen um, from the kits that I've seen available they come in sort of a lighter color and then yeah they, they are painted from there so um, and then if they have open eyes they're usually um, glass eyes are usually added to the doll or glued in um, and hair is um, is added to the doll and the process of applying the hair is called rooting so um, the artist will root the hair is the term that they use and it's where they they take a needle and they add one hair at a time one single um, strand of hair at a time um, and there are different types of rooting but I won't go into that today because this is just sort of you know a an introduction so I'm not going into too many details I want to keep it simple not make it too complicated so um so the doll will start off with the arms and the legs and the cloth body and then it will be assembled um and the body will be filled i'm going to take this out to show you so this is stuffing and so that will be used to stuff the doll and then the doll will be weighted the term they use is weighted I'll just grab these out. I'm just going to snip this cord so that I can take out the beads inside because I want to show you how the dolls are weighted because they are weighted to feel like a real baby. They feel, yeah, amazing to hold. They feel just like a baby. There's also in here, there's these little strips of um, smelly stuff. They make the baby smell, even smell like a real baby. So often artists will pop some of those in too. I'm just being careful because I know that this stocking has a hole in it. So I'm trying to find where that is. Oh, there it is. It's at the bottom. So they're these tiny little glass beads that are inside of a stocking. Um, that's a very common way to um, for artists to, to use these glass beads. They put them in a stocking and then pop them in the body. And often there'll be a couple of sacks of beads in there, one near the bottom and then perhaps one closer to the top. And that's what gives the doll the weight and makes them feel um, very much like a real baby to hold. So the sculpt is first made by an artist who takes some, usually polymer clay, and the artist will um, mold the head and the arms and the limbs out of polymer clay and um, that is then used for the mold that um, that is used for the reborn um, now um, there is another way that reborns can be made and that is where a 3d scanner is used to take a an image of a real baby and these um, these reborns are known as real born dolls rather than reborn dolls. They're called real born dolls. So if you hear that term real born, that means that the doll has come from a real baby, from a scan of a real baby. And I've got um, one here to show you. So this is her sculpt name is real born Kimberly. So that is her sculpt name. Now, just while we're talking about the sculpts, that was the other thing I wanted to mention was that the artist will give the doll that she has sculpted or he has sculpted a sculpt name. So um, since this baby was um, named after a real baby, yeah, her name is Realborn Kimberly, that is the sculpt name. So when you hear sculpt name or kit name talked about, um, that's referring to the name of the kit that's been given by the sculptor. Um, and then often um, when you receive your doll, some people like to keep the sculpt name for their baby or um, we, we like to pick our own names for the dolls. Aaliyah loves choosing names or sometimes we ask our subscribers to help us choose a name. So that's completely up to the person.
Alright, so I hope that that helped to show you how a reborn doll is different to your regular baby doll. Um, so now I've come over to the lounge area and I have some of um, mine and Aaliyah's collection here in front of you. And I'm going to show you the different types of reborns. The different types of bodies that they can have and the differences in them. So I'm going to show you that now. For this I'm going to um, undress all the babies so that you can uh, properly see uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, so I've undressed the babies. I'll just pop the camera down and I'm going to talk to you guys about the different types of reborns. Alright, so to start with, I'm going to talk quickly about the two main different types of paint that can be used for a reborn. So the main type of paint that is used is called Genesis Heat Set Paints. These will often be um, abbreviated to GHSP. So if you see those initials, GHSP, that's referring to Genesis Heat Set Paints. And these are paints that are applied and then um, the doll needs to be, the, the vinyl part of the doll needs to be baked in, in an oven. So to set, the paints need heat, hence the, type, hence the name of the paint. Um, so um, all of my dolls have been painted using Genesis Heat Set Paints apart from one. And that is little Bethany, who's over here. This is Bethany, and she has been painted using acrylic air dry paints. Um, so she's my only baby that has been used painted using those paints. And um, I have one other baby coming, um, made by the same artist, uh, and she also will be um, painted with the acrylic air dry paints. So they're the two types of paint that are commonly used. So now I'm going to show you what little Matthew has on his belly. So Matthew has a belly plate. So this is a belly plate. I'll just show you up close. So some reborns come with what's called a belly plate. Now this is a um, full belly plate as it covers the full um, chest and torso area. Um, and they can be anatomically correct. This one is gender neutral as it doesn't have any girly or, or boy parts. Um, but some do come gender specific. Not all reborns come with these, it just depends on the particular sculpt. Um, and then I will just show you little Grayson because he also has a belly plate. His has been tied onto his body, it actually has some holes that have been made there so that it can be tied onto his body. Um, his is just a little belly plate there covering the tummy area. So the belly plates are basically just props that are used mostly for photography I think um, for the purposes of taking photos you know to, to um, help the the dolls give that even more realistic look so I'll just quickly talk about the limb length of a baby of the reborn so Matthew here he has full arms and full legs so what that means is that the arms and the legs um, they come right up to the joint here and I'll show you um, what it means if a reborn has three quarter arms and three quarter legs. So I've got little Lola here. I'll just sit her down here. She's a bit floppy. So Lola has three quarter arms and three quarter legs. So as you can see, she has this extra piece of material here. So that's why it's called three quarter, three quarter arms and legs. So when you're going to look for a doll, which I'll talk about in a moment, it will often say whether the doll has three quarter limbs or full limbs and um, I think all of my dolls either have full arms and full legs or three quarter arms and three quarter legs but I think you can also get kits that have three quarter arms and full legs for example um, so that's that now moving on and we have Natalie over here she is our only full vinyl body doll so as you can see, she has no cloth body. She is entirely made of vinyl. Um, and I did forget to mention earlier, I've just felt in there, um, Natalie has the glass beads that are used to weight the body. She also has those in her arms. Um, usually the artist will put some of those glass beads in the arms and legs as well to give it um, that little bit of extra weight. Um, so yeah, so Natalie is anatomically correct, which means that she has her girly parts um as well 
Now, moving on to hair. Um, most of my babies have, have either rooted hair or they have a bald head. Um, or two of our babies have a combination, which I will show you now with little Eleanor. A combination of rooted hair. See, she has just a little bit of rooted hair on top. And then the remainder of her hair is painted. So she has a combination of rooted hair and painted hair. And so does Bethany. I'll just show you Bethany's hair too. So Bethany has painted hair and then the little tuft on top of the rooted hair. Now I'll just talk briefly about the different sizes of the dolls. So Eleanor is our smallest reborn and she is, I think you would call her a micro premi reborn. She's only 10 inches. So usually when you're buying a reborn, you will see um, the inches, the length in inches of the doll. So Eleanor is 10 inches. And then a newborn size baby is usually between 18 to 20 inches. Um, I think probably a 17 inch baby would be considered premi. I'm not 100% sure. Um, so if anyone knows the answer to that, you can let me know. I'm not sure of the exact sizing and where, you know, that all lies. But um, I think um, Grayson, he's about 18 inches. I think that's right. So he's, yeah, newborn size. And then Matthew is also newborn size. But as you can see, he's, he's a bit bigger than Grayson. But Matthew is um, closer to 20 inches. I think he's 19 to 20 inches. And then we have um, bigger babies like Natalie who I think a lot of people would refer to Natalie as a toddler. I still think of her as just a big baby um, You know rather than a toddler um, But yeah, I think um, in the reborn community a lot of people would refer to her as a toddler um, and then Bethany is um, I'll just move that over to her. So Bethany is about 22 inches So she is around the size of a three-month-old baby um, so yeah, the, the Reborns come in different sizes. All right, so in just a moment, I'm going to show you our silicon dolls. Um, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about magnets really quickly. So um, I think all of my Reborns have a magnet um, inside their head uh, behind their mouth. And that is so that they can take a magnetic pacifier or a magnetic dummy. So these are dummies that have been modified. They call it modified, which is where... Um, the teat or the nipple has been removed and they have um, stuck a magnet on there. Um, it's often, it's a good idea to cover the magnet with a little piece of felt like you can see there just to help protect the Reborn's paint. So as you can see, when we pop the dummy on the Reborn's mouth, it just sticks. So um, we'll just see, I've got Bethany's here too. Show you hers. There we go. Whoops, sorry. There we go, there's Bethany's. And some Reborns, if they have a slightly open mouth like Matthew's, they can take um, a dummy that has been modified where um, the end has just been cut off like that. Um, I've just put a little bit of clear silicon in there to firm it up so that it stays in his mouth. So he doesn't actually have a magnet, at least I don't think he does. No, he doesn't have a magnet. Um, because he takes the full dummy like that so we can just pop that in there and then he can take that dummy all right so now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about silicon dolls so um, I'm sorry that little Emma's head is covered up here but um, well actually it's not covered up she doesn't have a head at the moment because we've sent it away to get some hair um, so I'm just going to cover that up so that it doesn't look too hideous because it does look a bit strange just having the, the ball on top there. Um, so this is our only full body silicon baby. So she's anatomically correct. So you can see her girly parts, but I've got, she's got her nappy on at the moment. Um, so she is made of silicon, which is a, a very different material to the vinyl that the regular Reborns are made from. So as you can see, the silicon is very soft and squishy and bendable. Now silicon babies are a lot more expensive than the vinyl babies um, because they're a lot harder. The process of, of making them is, is a lot harder um, and, and more expensive to make. So um, yeah, so this is Emma, our full body silicon baby. And then um, the other type of silicon baby that you can get is a partial silicon. So this is our partial silicon Rosie 
or we've got her as a boy at the moment, um, but we haven't named named him yet. But as you can see, it's called partial silicon because he has a silicon head, silicon arms and legs, but then he still has the cloth body that the regular reborns have. So he's part silicon, hence the name partial silicon. Um, yes, yeah, so um, the partial silicon is not as expensive as a full body silicon, but I will go into that in just a moment when I talk about the, the pricing of the reborns. All right, so now I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about pricing. So how much you will expect to pay for a reborn. So um, I don't usually give out the details of how much I pay for my dolls, but since I know a lot of people are curious to know um, how much they should be paying and what sort of quality they will get for what price, um, I thought that I would share that information today. Um, so the price of a reborn will depend on many things. It will, of course, depend on the quality of, of the doll, of the paintwork, and um, that will be affected, of course, by the experience of the artist, uh, how many years that they've been reborning, although that is not always an indication of talent. Um, some of the artists that I use have not been reborning for that long, but they really do have a talent for, for the art form. So, um, yeah, it just depends on the artist. It will also depend on the size of the doll. Generally, the bigger the doll, the more expensive it will be. Um, it can also depend on the hair. So the more hair that a doll has, you know, the more work, the more hours that that takes. Um, so that again will, will up the price. Um, so a bald baby is generally cheaper than a baby with hair. Um, so we'll start down this end here because here we have two of my... Um, less expensive dolls. So these um, two here, this is Sophie. We've named her Sophie. She's the Robin Sculpt. I can't remember all their sculpt names, so I won't go into them all. But um, And then this is the Sugar Sculpt. We've named him Ethan. Um, now these two dolls, I paid around $200. Now the price will also depend on whether you buy the doll new or whether um, you know the doll has had a previous owner. So both of these dolls had previous owners. And yeah, like I said, I paid around $200. And um, I know a lot of you are in the US or the UK, so that equates to about $150 US dollars or $115, uh, 115 pounds for each of these dolls. And um, so they just, their detailing is just not as, um, they're just not as detailed as some of the more expensive dolls. So... Uh, as you can see here, I'll just zoom in a little bit. So Ethan, he doesn't really have any veining or anything like that. He's kind of just, he's got some blushing, but um, the details just aren't quite, you know, aren't quite there. Um, and he does have a slightly shiny look about him. And then Sophie here, as you can see, um, once again, she actually does have a lot of what they call mottling, which is this effect that you can see the mottling effect or the little, um, yeah, it's called mottling. I don't know how else to explain it, but yeah, you can see the quality is, she's a little bit red there and um, just not quite as realistic as some of the more expensive dolls. And then her hair, um, although she has a lot of hair, um, the quality of the rooting isn't, uh, you know, you can see, um, you can actually see the needle marks quite well, whereas a doll that has been rooted, where the hair has been rooted really well, you you shouldn't see those um, those needle needle holes. But they are still super cute, and um, for their price, I think they were well worth it. Um, so then, moving along, we have two little bald babies here. They were both painted by different artists. I bought both of these babies brand new, so they came straight from the artist. And um, these were both around five hundred dollars each, which I've got it written down here. So that's about four hundred US dollars or two hundred and eighty pounds. So that's how much they were each. And you can see that the detailing is um, is a lot, a lot better on these babies. You can see little Finn has got veins happening there, and um, he just has a more realistic look about him. Um, He's got his 
can see his little hands there, the nails are perfect. And then the same with little Lola, she has a lot of detailing, a lot of blushing and the mottling happening. Um, so the quality is just that little bit better, or quite a bit better really. <laughs> Now, Tilly was also around the $500 mark. I think she was slightly over, maybe $550, which um, she was also purchased new from the artist. And I think that's an amazing price considering her quality and, and the fact that she has the rooted hair as well. And her hair has been rooted beautifully. As you can see, you, you just you can't see those, those needle points like you can on the cheaper babies. Um, and again, she does have um, really good detailing. Um, as you can see there from her paintwork. Um, so then moving on again, we go up a little bit more in price. And Bethany was, she was around $800, which is, let me just check my sheet. Sorry, guys. So that's around $600 US or £340. Um, so, yeah, again, that's, I think that has a lot to do with the artist is, um, she has a, there's a lot of demand for her dolls, so the demand is another thing that will greatly affect the price. Yeah, so again, um, Bethany is yeah, she's got amazing detailing. She's painted beautifully. Um, I'm not sure if you can see her tongue in this light, but you can see her little tongue inside her mouth. I'm just trying to get the light, um, and even the detailing of her tongue there. You know, she's got um, you can see the veining even in her tongue there which is, yeah, quite amazing, I think. And then we have Natalie. Now, Natalie's our full vinyl baby. So full vinyl babies are going to be more expensive than the cloth body, obviously, because there's a lot more painting involved and the painting, you know, is very time consuming. Um, when these babies are painted, it's not just one layer, it's many, many layers of paint. So the artist will paint a layer and then, um, and then set the paint in the oven if they're the heat set paints or if they're the air dry they'll have to wait a certain amount of time and then it's another layer and there's many 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 layers so there's so much work that goes into these dolls which is why they are so expensive um, so Natalie was around a thousand dollars which is about 800 US dollars or 560 pounds um, and as you can see her paintwork is amazing her detailing um, she, she, yeah, she looks very realistic. And then we have our silicon dolls, which um, are another step up again. So um, our partial silicon here, Rosie, um, she, I bought her pre-owned. So she came from, she had a previous owner. Actually, she had at least two previous owners. Um, I've said in another video, I do not know a lot about her. She didn't come with very much information, but when I saw her, I knew I had to have her. Um, but yeah, her, her paint, paintwork is amazing so she cost uh, just over two thousand dollars Australian which is about fifteen hundred US dollars or um, one thousand one hundred pounds um, and that's pretty standard of what you would expect to pay for a a high quality partial silicon baby um, and then our full body silicon over here our full body silicon Emma um, she cost around $3,000, um, being full body, she's going to be more expensive. And, um, so that $3,000 would equate to about 2,300 US dollars or 1,700 pounds, just to give you an idea of, of the sort of pricing that you may expect to pay. Now, um, there are babies, silicon dolls can go, um, anywhere from usually around $1,000 up to, ten thousand dollars even higher um, depending again on the artist and the demand for their work um, yeah so that's the pricing and then now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what to look for when purchasing a doll and and where to look all right so I've just moved all the naked babies out of the way so we've got some lovely dressed babies here to look at while we talk about where you can look at purchasing a reborn so there are many places that you can look for reborns, um, one of them being eBay. Um, you do need to be very careful with eBay. I've heard so many horror stories of people, you know, paying for a reborn, it's been a scam or the doll has been really poor quality. Um, I did actually have a, a bit of a bad experience myself where I purchased a reborn, um, she was our 
first giveaway baby actually and she was she was a lovely reborn but um i just paid way too much for her if i had have paid two to three hundred dollars for her then i would have been quite happy with that but i paid i think it was closer to 650 dollars and she, the quality just was not there um so she just she was not worth that price and um, so you do have to be really careful but if you know what to look for and what questions to ask then chances are you will not fall into that kind of trap so the biggest thing I think to look at when purchasing on eBay or anywhere for that matter, matter is to look at reviews you need to um, to make sure that there are other people that have have um, that have received dolls from that artist that are happy and and that love the product um, that's really important because if you're hearing positive feedback from other customers that's a really good sign and the more feedback you can see the better which I know it can be hard for artists that are starting out because it does take time to build that up but um, it's just one of those things that that is really important um, and then also us as collectors, it's really important that we leave positive feedback. If we do receive a doll that we love, um, it's really important to leave positive feedback on that person's eBay account or Facebook page so that other people will know that they are a reputable artist and that their, their work is of a high standard. So when, when buying a Reborn on eBay, um, I've never done a, I've never bid on a Reborn before. I have purchased a couple um, that had a set price, but my advice would be for people that are going to bid on a Reborn, um, and a lady um, spoke about this yesterday or the day before in one of her videos that I watched, and it was a really good point and something that I do often think about and that people don't seem to understand. If you are going to bid on a reborn, wait if you can until the last, even the last minute of the auction and then put in your absolute maximum price that you're willing to pay. Because if you bid early on, on the auction, in the auction, then all you're doing is bringing up the price. Now, I'm sorry, sellers are not going to be happy for me saying this, but... Um, at this point I am a collector not an artist so I'm trying to give pointers to collectors so um, yeah if you will if you really if you want to get the best price that you can then you you're best off waiting until the last minute of the auction although having said that I personally I, I bid when it gets to 20 seconds because I've been buying on eBay for years and um, yeah so Ideally, the later, the better. The closer to the end of the auction, the better. And if you put in the maximum price that you're willing to pay, then you won't be disappointed. If the price goes over, I mean, you will be disappointed, but you you will know that that was the absolute maximum that you were willing to pay. So, um, yeah. So that would be my advice for if you are bidding on a Reborn. And then, like I said, if you're buying a, just buying one, um, check the reviews, ask as many questions to the artist as you can. If there is not, it's always also a positive sign if there is a very detailed description of, of the doll. Um, there should be lots of details, lots of information. Ideally, you shouldn't have to be chasing the artist, asking them obvious questions like the size of the doll, um, the sculpt name, things like that should all be made very clear. Um, any reputable artist will have all of that information there ready for you. So another place to look, which is probably my main place that I um, find my Reborns, is on Facebook. I find Facebook amazing for, um, for finding good quality artists. Um, most of them have a Facebook page or a nursery page. The key, I guess, is to to find those pages and the way that I found the good ones was by joining some of my local reborn pages or groups so if you simply go into Facebook and type in reborn groups and then perhaps your country that you're in so for me I've typed in reborn group Australia and then it would come up with a list of of groups and then a good indication is the more people in a group chances are you know um, the more information you're going to get out of that group you're going to have more artists in there and collectors you know to to help you um, so if you join some of those groups and then 
you will find the majority of people are so helpful. The groups that I'm that I'm in are amazing. I if I have any questions, I simply post the question there, and then I have there's artists there. Um, most of the artists that have made some of my dolls are on um, one of the pages in particular. So. Um, and they're all more than happy to help with questions. So you can ask questions and then the admin of the group I'm in mean also, um, she she does research for people. So if someone has a question, she will go and research online and then she will post links to, you know, different articles or YouTube videos on the topic, the particular topic that someone's asking about. So um, yeah, the Reborn groups are amazing. And then also um, they will often list you know amazing reborn artists as well that are in your country so um, most of the artists that I use I have found through one particular reborn Facebook group and they even post their dolls for sale in the group as well so some of the dolls will pop up for sale and and then I'm able to click on their the link to their um, their nursery page and then I'm able to read read through their reviews so again you want to read the reviews of the artists if there's an artist on Facebook with a nursery page you want to go to their nursery page read all of their reviews go through their photos you click on their photos and they should come up with you know all of the photos of their previous work and if you're consistently seeing um, you know really high quality dolls then that's a really good sign and yeah, I can't say it enough, but the reviews, check the reviews and go to the about section of the of the Facebook page and, and read up about the artist. Most artists will have a little bit of information in there. It'll usually say how long they've been reborning for. They might even put some personal information about, you know, how their passion for dolls started, things like that. So it's really interesting to read. And then you can send them a message if you... Um, you know if you have any questions all the artists that I have come across have been really accommodating happy to answer questions so those are the main places that I find my reborns um, I also use Gumtree sometimes and come across um, pre-owned um, dolls um, but once again I, I usually check all through all the details that are written there and then if um, if they have said where the doll you know who the artist was then I will go to that artist nursery page and I will even message them and ask them about that particular doll just to make sure that they're you know that um, there's nothing wrong with the doll that it was you know or any details I need to know I can ask um, so I'm just going to quickly run through some questions that you should ask when purchasing a reborn if these details aren't in the description for the sale then um, then you may want to ask for these things. So firstly, most reborns come with a COA. Now a COA, st COA stands for Certificate of Authenticity. That's what COA stands for. So if you see that, that's what it means. Now this is um, our Bethany's COA. She is the pillar sculpt. So the COA will tell you the sculpt's name. So she is pillar and it'll tell you whether she's a limited edition. So she's, it says limited edition out of 1,000. So there was 1,000 of her made, of her sculpt. And um, the artist's name, the artist's name is Adri Stowett. And um, there it tells you, I don't know if you can read that, but she is number five out of 1,000. And then it's got the signature of the artist there. And then just some more information on the back. So that is the COA. It is preferable that your doll comes with a COA. Not all of them do. Some of mine didn't, especially the pre-owned babies. Um, some of them didn't come with a COA just because, you know, the owner um, didn't keep it for whatever reason. Um, but I'm, you know, I, if you buy a reborn, keep the COAs because if you ever come to sell a reborn, um, it can affect the pricing. They, you know, of of the doll if they don't have a COA, they can. Um, people may not want to pay pay as much and then again here is Bethany's birth certificate so if the doll has a birth certificate it's always nice to get that the birth certificate is made up by the artist so the person that has painted and, and put together the doll so our Bethany came from Emma from Memmers Munchkins Reborn Nursery and so there we have the birth certificate says the name of the sculpt the date that she was uh, made and the time the gender the length and the weight in pounds and she's even put the country of birth on there so the information that you want to see on the description of a doll that's for sale would include the length of the doll 
the weight of the doll, um, the paints that were used, whether it, whether it be Genesis heat set paints or the acrylic air dry paints. You may like to know when the doll was made, the date that the doll was made, the type of hair that has been used, whether the Reborn has three quarter limbs or full, full length limbs, whether the Reborn comes with a belly plate. Another question that I like to ask is, is the doll coming from a smoke free home? Um, because I, I've been lucky so far, but I have heard um, of other collectors who have received a baby and um, the doll has smelt horribly of cigarette smoke. Um, so yeah, if that is if that is something that is important to you, then then yeah, I would I would suggest that you ask ask that question also. All right, so I'm pretty sure that sums up most of what I wanted to say. I'm sure I've left a lot of things out or please let me know in the comments below if you have any other questions, like I said, or um, if there's anything that I have left out. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope that this video has been informative in some way um, to somebody. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching our videos and um, our next video should be, well, we may have a box opening coming before we do our reborn giveaway of little Grayson. So that's very exciting. That's coming up on Wednesday for Valentine's Day. Well, that'll be tomorrow. So um, yeah, Wednesday. So we're looking forward to that. All right, thanks guys. See you later. Bye.